So the second to last essay is called The Sports Taboo by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, throughout Gladwell's essay, he numbers off main portions of his writing, numbered one through four. In number one, he focuses on racial dimensions of sports. For example, blacks play wide receiver, whites play quarterback. Blacks do sprints, white do it, but they lose. Another popular example, most, ba most basketball players are black, which is mainly true. But is there a difference? Is there an athletic difference between whites and blacks? Medically proven, yes, there is, and it has to do with the bone mass. It is not a form of racism, it is facts. Number two, discusses the difference, not only between blacks and whites, but uses men and women as an example as differences in, in terms of math. While their averages are the same, the variability is in favor of girls. Um, this can go for almost any area of gender and the same for races. Um, overall, African American populations seem to create more genetic outliner, outliers than whites do. Number three focuses on the hypertension and muscle characteristics in black America over white Americans. Black Americans are just are born with things that whites aren't and that comes from their descent. They compare the math reference again and compare the two. Whites are like girls in math, blacks are like boys in math. Number four is just a basic rundown of author Gladwell's athletic past and how he fit into one sport more than the other. And the final essay is called Impression Management in a Networking in a Networked Setting by Dana Boyd. She first starts off by describing what impression management is. So basically when we meet new people, they convey to others what we believe to be a good impression. Norms, cultural dynamics, and institutions we give off all determine our impression management. Based on social situations, people determine what they choose to share and what not to share. People can also work together to shape self-presentations. They use shared familiar familiarity. A lot of this happens on social media. We can present ourselves as someone we're not. Um, there's a ton of editing that one can do and privacy isn't always the, the best. So there may be people that see it and determine that identity. Teens are the ones who face it the most. They're struggling to find what it is and what isn't appropriate, who to follow and who to not. It is a confusing time. So that is the end of reading um, pop culture. And for rhetorical act chapter 10, it is called opportunities and challenges arising from the rhetoric. Out of the three main elements of the rhetorical context, it is the rhetorical it is the rhetoric that can be best understood as both an opportunity and a challenge for rhetorical action. Um, one way to one way is through ethos, which is credibility. This means the character or the of the rhetoric, the way the rhetoric mirrors qualities valued by a particular culture and attitude members of an audience have toward the rhetoric. There's also prior ethos. This includes reputation, appearance, introduction, occasion, and context. Almost done.